Thanks for joining us for the Member Excite presentation. The Member Excite presentation is informative, interesting to the audience, and showcases the strengths of the presenter as an entrepreneur and their area of expertise. It's not a sales pitch, it's a 10 minute educational and insightful exploration into what they do. And of course, it's exciting. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our BX Excite presenter today. Nick Rushton from Nick Rushton Mortgages to present to us on. People don't know how much you know until they know how much you care. Nick has been in the mortgage industry for more than 25 years, first in a bank in NC, and then as a broker in the largest broker company in NC for nine years, consistently in the top five brokers nationally for all the time month on month. Since coming to OZ in 2008 with his family and setting up life here, Nick decided to jump back into the mortgage game here and has excelled. Married with four adult children, Nick now has the newfound energy to put back into the business and have a great life work battles with his amazing wife of 27 years, Jane. Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together for Nick Rushton. How many of you have actually bought a house and, and got a mortgage to buy a house? In the past, everybody? Yeah. Right, and everybody enjoyed the experience of getting the mortgage? Oh, well, Didn't find it stressful at all? Okay. Everybody found no. it stressful. That's yeah. the that's where I'm going to really. I mean, what I do in, in the mortgage game, and, and as I said earlier, I've only been doing it for 25 years, so I'm still finding my way. Everybody's different in, in, in every particular mortgage situation. But the whole thing about what I want to talk about is taking the stress out of what a mortgage application is all about. People come into this, this void of the unknown. A mortgage is three simple things. There's a thing called the LDR, I know, it's jargon the loan to value ratio. The loan to value ratio, to keep it in simple terms, if you buy a house for say, $500,000, you get a mortgage for $400,000. Believe me on the numbers now, I know that's 80%. So you're borrowing 80% of the value of the house, right? That's the LVR. It's a number, you can't do anything about it. Whatever your deposit is, compared to the value of the house, it's what it is, you can't change it. So don't stress about it. The second thing is affordability. Banks want to know that you can afford to pay it. And in the current environment of the clip bait in the media, with saying, you know, the official cash rate has just gone up by half a percent. Oh my God, that's going to cause all this mortgage stress across the country. Please, just relax. The interest rates in the current environment are still at an extraordinarily low place, especially when you compare the last, I don't know, 25 years that I've been in the game. Um, some of you may remember back Thank in the late nice. 80s, Early 90s, I don't know what they were like here in Australia, but in New Zealand, mortgage interest rates topped out at about 19.5%. Gradually, since then, if you followed it, there's been little wee speed bumps, but it's been trending down. Even through the GFC of 2008, it trended down. All the way through the 2010s, it's trended down. Here, extraordinarily low with interest rates at the moment. But put that aside, when banks are assessing loans, they're assessing them not at the interest rate that you're going to pay, they're assessing them with a 4 or 5 or 6 percent margin, so if interest rates do go up, they still know you're going to be able to pay that mortgage. It's RG209, which Joe will know a little bit about, it's called Responsible Lender. We need to make sure that the rates do creep up, that, that, there are, that the customer is okay. So affordability comes down to this, the bank wants to know that you can make the repayment, they simply get your income, take away your expenses, your food, your power, your rates, your water, education, nowadays streaming services, mobile phone costs, everything. And at the end of it, you have enough to pay your mortgage. Simple as that. It's like a number. A number, 10 minus 6 is 4. It's not almost 4 or nearly 4 or a little bit more than 4. It's 4. It's just a number. You can't do much about it. That's, that's what it is. What we can do is assess where you're at with your mortgage and how much you can actually afford. And that's the point of affordability when it comes to lenders. The last part is, is probably the crucial part, which transformed my way of thinking in how I handle my mortgages or my mortgage clients. And that's to do with credibility. And I advise everybody who's going for a mortgage to clean up your credit and be current with everything as much as you can leading up to when you apply for mortgage. It's just so important because that's a big factor when a lender's looking at your mortgage application. 
Who am I dealing with? Are they intending to pay back the mortgage? And they can only prove that by having good credibility. Which leads me into a client that I had back in New Zealand about 20 years ago. Uh, I, I worked for, as Max said, this, uh, this mortgage broking company. It was a franchise organisation. It was the biggest one in New Zealand at the time. And, and they had a great marketing plan. And, and we were like conveyor belts, you know. And more would come along, Sam, prove, next, Sam, prove, next, Sam, prove. This guy rings me one day and he says, Nick, I've heard you're one of the best mortgage brokers in Christchurch. I'm like, thanks. He said, I just want to take this back to context of time. This is 20 years ago. He said, I've got an $80,000 salary and I've got a $35,000 deposit. Can you get me the best deal for someone in my situation? I'm thinking, next, then come on in and see me. I'll do this for you. This is, this is a lay down. He, uh, I said, Rick, the paperwork, how about tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock? Great, I came in and saw me at 10 o'clock the next morning. He sat down and he said, Nick, I just want five minutes of your time. If this doesn't work for you, I'm happy to leave your office. But you, you tell me. Okay, this is that. Well, why would they say that? I mean, this is just a laid out of the And then he proceeded to tell me the story. Now, I just want to add some slides to the story for you right now. How many of you have Melbourne Cup? In New Zealand? The week after the Melbourne Cup in Christchurch is Cup Week. We have the New Zealand Trotty Cup on the Tuesday following the Melbourne Cup. That whole week is the Cup team comes to the city. It is just a gallop of, uh, of racing, whether it be gallops, greyhounds, trots, the ADP show, all of that. It's just a huge week. The ADP show grounds are in Addington. The trotting track is in Addington. The main road goes from Addington is called the Lincoln Road. This guy owned a pub. On Lincoln Road. Yeah. Cup week for him is like the biggest week of the year. But no, nah, Christmas doesn't even get close. It is just like day and day and day and day. And he had one of the most reputable pubs along Lincoln Road. And uh, Friday of that week is a public holiday. It's able to show that people want to go to the races or to the shop or they get the hell out of the road. And the two thirds of them made the big one. Yankee Showgrounds on the racetrack. And of course, it's the busiest time of the year for him. On Sunday night, when he was closing up in a bar, he was closing up the hotel, he was locking the door and he got sharp pain in the back of his head. And he heard his voice say, We're going back inside. Somebody had a sawed off shotgun and was robbing the gun. Took him back inside. And I'm going back 20 years, so there's no such thing as Epicos back in the very, very early days of Epicos. Everything was cash. Walked back inside, make him undo the safe, and he left him of over $300,000 of cash. And just for the fun of it, decided to give him a broken lip and use the bucket and wipe it to smack him across the top of the tent, put him out in the creek, lose him up in there. He was able to produce all this paper with police reports, newspapers, the whole nine yards. And when you're in the game of hotels, the breweries don't have any empathy. Other than two months in the game room. Sit and listen to the story that I'm going. Bankrupt. Joe, you would know. You want to come in for bankrupt? Yeah. Landers are not going anywhere near you, right? So he said, uh, since then, he said two weeks ago, I got discharged from bankruptcy. He said, okay, well, you know how to do that. He said, my father in law, not his father, nothing wrong with his father, I don't know anything about his father, but his father in law, he said, you know how to run a pharmacy, and I trust you. I'm buying the business, you're going to run it. Gave him an $80,000 salary to run the pharmacy, and what he did for the pharmacy is he went back and he would pay all of his creditors. The breweries, the, the, the hotel for the lease, the staff, <laughs> catering, everything. He would pay them all and he'd have sex to prove it. And he took his reports and he asked to be discharged from bankruptcy because he had no sex to prove that he paid them all back. And they granted the, the discharge. How many of you think this guy has integrity right now? Who, who, who would lead to this guy? I'm sitting there going, I want to help you, but I just don't know how. He said to me, will you take on my case? I said, mate, look, to be honest with you, I get it. 
but I'm not sure how I can help you. There's, there's, there's this many banks who are going to lend you money. And he says, yeah, but you're going to take me on. And so I'm sure you're not getting me out. This many lenders are going to lend you money. He says, yes, but you take me on. And he persisted. And I said, I tell you what, I'll do the best I can, but I'm not making any promises. So I... Uh, and left and like, I got all these details, filled out applications, did everything with it. I was like, I don't know what to do with this. I, I, I got to really think about what this is all about. No major bank is going to take that on. And in, in New Zealand, there are four major banks like there are here in Australia, right? And, and um, you know, they would just deal with it. So I didn't have an inkling. I didn't want to take him to a lender of last resort. I just didn't feel that was scared for him. If I needed to, I possibly would. I don't know if I would even work out tomorrow. Because bankruptcy is like a big black knife. This is like a white So I had, a, I had lots of friends in New Zealand in the banking industry. So I had a friend who was like a bank manager for the Open Society. And I rang him and I said, hey, Mark. Yeah. Mark, we haven't had coffee for a long time. It's a nice shout. See you tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock. Maybe you can coffee. And he goes, Sure, Nick, what's up? See you at 10. <laughs> I walked up to the office, I said, mate, give me five minutes. If you don't want to after five minutes, I'm walking out. I laid the story on top of him and he says, he said to me, Nick, you know I can't approve that loan. And I said, yeah, I know you can't, but your board can. And he goes, there's no way I'm putting you in front of the board. And I thought at that stage, yes, he's taking it to the board. I said, don't worry about it. When we go to the board to explain the loan to the board, I said, it'll be a sense. Don't worry. He says, when we get to the board, you're not saying anything. Yes, I've got myself in a committee to the board. <laughs> we got to the board meeting. Mark said to me, he says, nothing. Just say nothing. Don't say a word. You sit there. I went, sure. Mark presented it, and immediately the chairman of the board asked me all about it. I was able to present it. Two weeks later, the board came back and signed off. Five dollars loan. It transformed my way of thinking because I had to really get in with the customer at that point and be in his shoes and understand where he was at, and then get that get that integrity. But the, yeah, the, the, the stamp next, stamp next had to go away because that wasn't what I was doing. I was, I was doing the best I could to help this guy in his home. Just a postscript to that story. We moved to Australia in two thousand eight, and I've been back regularly to Christchurch and. Um, Post earthquake, they moved the, the main rugby ground from where it was, Lancaster Park, that's just a pile of rubble. And it's now where the showground used to be. And they moved the move showgrounds away, right down Lincoln Road, is where this rugby ground is. And I was going to a rugby game one night. There's a whole lot of little wee pop up, uh, you know, wee restaurant bar y type places that popped up down Lincoln Road because it's now such a popular part of town. And, and I was just in one of these bars one night. Mark, the bank manager's in there, and I just went across. I said, Mark, how's it going? I said, how did all that go? You know, what's, what's going on with him? He says, so glad you introduced me to him. He's paid off his mortgage. He subsequently got an investment property. He's, paid, he's bought and paid off the pub that he had. And by the way, we were sitting and having a beer now. And I said, yes, this is his pub. And I went, Love it. wow, that even blew my mind even more. Because I was able to help this guy get started. It's, it's his journey. I just felt so privileged to be a part of it at the start. So lovely ending to a nice story, but um, it's all about people don't hear how much you know until they know how much you know. And that's what I was